the seventh chapter, Jesus is laying down some principles of life. And I want us to look, as we're looking at the Word this morning, I want you to examine your life. Because Jesus tells us in there that we are not to judge one another. He tells us in there that narrow is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. He tells us in there that to build upon the solid foundation, and there's only one solid foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. But he says something in there that I think that we need to really take a look at this morning. Because I think a lot of people, everybody wants to go to heaven. I do. I want to go to heaven. Good job, Amelia. Amelia wants to go to heaven. But Jesus tells us in there, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to go to heaven. You say, well, pastor, we're in church. That doesn't cut it. You can go to church every day, all day long, twice on Sunday. But unless you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and are living that relationship. Let's see what he says here. Beginning of verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done any mighty wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What's he saying there? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does what? The will of the Father. Father, we ask your blessing upon your word here today. And I pray that, Father, in our lives, that we are living your will. That we are putting into action and into play in our lives that which you have and desire for us. Speak to us through your word here this morning. In Jesus' name. The title of my sermon this morning, Just to Say Jesus is Not Enough. Just to Say Jesus is Not Enough. And I believe Jesus makes that very clear. So if you're here this morning and you're just saying Jesus, that's not enough. We need to be living for Jesus. We need to be putting God's Word into play and action in our lives. There are too many Christians today who are playing a double standard life. And they're saying, Lord, Lord, I don't want to get to heaven and God say, I never knew you. I don't know about you, but I want to be doing God's will, doing what God requires, doing what God asks of us. In that parable, he tells us a little bit ahead of this uh, he says that narrow is that gate. You know, a lot of people out here today believe that they can live any way they want to. But Jesus says, narrow is the gate that leads into life. And what else did he say there? Few be there that find it. Hello? 
Is that us? Because it says, broad is the way. You know, we, we, we use grace as a measure. And we use grace as an opportunity. Oh, I can sin and God will forgive me. God will forgive you if you ask for forgiveness. Notice here this morning, that as we begin to look at this, Jesus also tells us that we are known by our fruit. What are you seeing in your life? Are you seeing a life that is productive, is producing? Or do you see a life this morning that I don't care? Do you see a life of destruction? Do you see a life of compromise? Do you see a life that goes contrary to the Word of God? All oh, but pastor, that doesn't mean that. I believe it does. God has a standard. And God's standard has not changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our standard of our world has changed. Our philosophy of our world has changed. But Jesus has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and He will be the same tomorrow. His standard doesn't change. Notice when we go back here and begin to look at this again. Not all. Not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. How is your life? See, I believe that this life that we have here is a, but a preparation for where we're going to spend eternity. I believe God gives us the opportunities to come into a relationship with Him. And I believe that that's part of God's will. He wants a relationship with you. A personal relationship. Not a how you doing relationship, but he wants that personal relationship. You know, we have a lot of people today who want to have a far off relationship. I think of the children in, in, in the Old Testament when they knew that they had sinned against God and they told Moses, Moses, you go into the tabernacle and you speak to God. God wants you to speak to Him. He don't want you to send somebody else into the tabernacle. He wants you to speak to Him. He wants you to bring it to Him. But they said, oh no God, we can't. We're afraid. We're afraid of what He'll say. How many of us are afraid of what God's going to say when we honestly come before Him? But if we come, and I believe one of the areas that He looks at in there is repentance. Are you sorry for your sin? And that doesn't mean just get out and say, Oh God, I'm sorry. But repentance is turning from. That doesn't mean walk to an altar, kneel down and say the sinner's prayer, and get up, go back out and live the same way that you were living before. That means a changed life. That means begin to let God begin to deal with that which is called sin. And He will spell it out for you. He has put His Word in our hearts. We know you can be the worst of sinner out here. But you know in your heart that something's not right. Why? Because God has written His laws upon our heart. He's written it there. But you know what? We like to take it so easy. And we like to say, Oh Lord, we can come and we can enter into a worship service, a beautiful worship service like we had this morning, but we can walk right back out and not, nothing ever happens in our hearts. Not all that say unto me, Lord, Lord, 
is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, I see a sad thing happening in most, in a lot of people's lives today. Dr. David Jeremiah preached a sermon, uh, I believe it was yesterday morning, and I listened to it. And he talked about the process of the Christian life. And how many of the, the, the men and women that we study about in the Bible lost out before they got all the way through. Some of them lost out in the very beginning. Some of them lost out in the middle. And some of them lost out at the end. Stay faithful to God. Look at your life. What is God saying to you here this morning? One of the things I think he is talking about is that aspect of repent. That word repent means to turn from. People, we are living in this world. But you don't have to participate in the junk that is going on. In your relationship with Jesus, is it a pure relationship between you and Jesus? Is it a pure relationship? Do you know him? Or is he just there in the time of trouble? Is he just there in the time of want? He wants to be there constantly. He wants commitment. He wants dedication. He wants faithfulness. He wants us to be able to come unto him. How many of your kids come to you and say, Daddy or Mama, I need or I want. I see Jesus right there. He's got his arms open wide. He wants to wrap you in his arms and let you know that he loves you. He cares for you. And yet, all of life's troubles, and many times, life's troubles come when we walk away from God. And his word, you know, how many of you picked up his word? How many of you have read his word? How many of you are trying daily to find out what God is speaking to you? How many of you have prayed? I know how hectic life gets. I know what it is to work 18 hours a day. But you know what? When we let God's word slip, this is his instruction manual. If you want joy and peace in your life, read the manual. He tells us how to get it. He tells us what to do. He says, if you'll do this, this will be the end result. He don't leave the gray areas. He don't leave the, I wonder. But how many of us pick it up and say, well, I like that part of it, but I don't like that part. Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And I, I've known people who've been able to be the best speakers, who've been able to, to take the, lay hands on the sick and see the sick healed. But down in their hearts, there wasn't a relationship. God's word is not going to return void. It's going to accomplish the purpose that's sent out to do. And God can use wicked people to do good things. But notice, our relationship. What is your relationship? What is your relationship with God? Where are you allowing God? What are you allowing God to do in your life? Oh, I'll, I'll run to an altar. I'll pray a sinner's prayer. But if that sinner's prayer doesn't change you, then there's something wrong. And I know people don't like to talk about that, but there's something wrong. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things pass away, and behold, all things become anew. I believe that scripture. We like to use the scripture in Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's a good scripture. I love that scripture. But read the scriptures ahead of it. It tells us what we have to do. Repent. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. But we like to put the cart before the horse. You know? Just want to simply share with this this morning because this is something that I believe in our world today. We have a lax standard. We have the form of godliness, but we deny the power. And Jesus tells us, don't have just the form of godliness. I want the real McCoy. I want the real thing. And I'm glad on November 16th in 1970, I received the real thing. And you know what? Whenever God should take me home, I want to finish the course well. I want to stay faithful, true, committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And to His Word. church this morning what is your relationship see I can't live somebody else's relationship your relationship has to be personal with the Lord and I want to stress that because a lot of times somebody says I'm getting saved because of so and so when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ they're accountable when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're accountable for what you've done with this word. Lord, I prayed in your name. Lord, I cast out demons in your name. Lord, I've done all these things. And Jesus may look at you and say, depart from me. I never knew you. Now, that may be a hard message to hear. But what is your relationship? What is, your, what is the principle behind what you're doing? People today, our country is in the, the condition that it's in because we, the people, have played around. We haven't lived our convictions we haven't lived the conviction of the Word of God. We haven't spoken to lead others to Christ into a personal relationship. Maybe we haven't taught. You know, I look at, I look at our families today. How many of us are teaching, reading the Word together? Oh, you got a social distance. All right. But you can still read the Word together. You can still share with one another. I talked to two or three different people this week and said, I'm just so lonely. We have this wonderful thing called a telephone. I hate them. But it's a wonderful tool. You can talk with each other. You can share with each other. You can social distance on a telephone. Right? But how many times do we use it other than, did you hear what so-and-so was doing? I don't like what... Maybe President... I heard, I heard our President's speech, or maybe President's speech. He couldn't remember the military. He was going to implement the military somewhere and he couldn't remember that that was what he was going to do. But you know what? God knows. 
How many of us are praying? I pray for a Holy Ghost conviction. I pray that spirit of truth will open up. God knows what he's going to do. But do we the church? Or do we sit on one side or the other side and we don't come together and pray? I, I do care who gets in office. Okay? But whoever gets in office, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will get a hold of their life. I'm praying that God will open up and that the church will begin to rise and shine like it's supposed to. Because we need to be out doing the work of the Lord, the will of the Father. So church, what's your response? What is your response this morning to this, the gospel. Jesus has made it very plain, very clear. Not all that say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Pastor, I don't like that preaching. Okay. You take it up with the master. You take it up with God. Because he doesn't want the phony baloney. He wants a real thing. So this morning, you get to make the choice. I get to make a choice. What am I going to do with God's Word? What are you going to do with God's Word? Are you going to accept it and live the will of the Father? Or are you going to reject it and just say, Lord, Lord. Your life is important and your life is standing in the balance. What are we doing with it? Which scale are we going to use? This is a scale. Close with this thought. Jesus says at the end of that, at the very, as you read on to the next verses there, he said, are, are you... Like a man building his house upon the sand? Or are you like a man building his house upon the rock? Because you know what? When the storms of life come along, that house on the sand is going to get tossed back and forth to and fro. Probably get washed down. But he who builds his house upon the rock will stand through every storm every trial, every test. But you know what? You're the only one that gets to make the choice. Which one are you going to build on? Let's pray. Father, you see every person here today. And Father, you see our lives. What are we building on? Are we just saying, Lord, Lord? And calling that good enough? Or Father, are we allowing your word to penetrate our hearts? Are you allowing your word to conform us into your will? in our lives because I believe that every person here God has a purpose and a plan for your life are you fulfilling that purpose and plan are you fulfilling that desire that God has of you first of all the fellowship that he wants with you secondly the call that he has in your life the father you allow us to make the choice. And sometimes, Father, in that choice as we go through some rough times, we see what this what self deception can do. 
Because, Father, your word says that the thief cometh not but to rob, to kill, to steal, and destroy. But your word also says that you come to give us life and it more abundantly. Lord, I want your life and I want it more abundantly. But, Father, we get to choose. Life is made up of choices. We can go the narrow way and the straight way or we can go the wide way and the unstraight way. But Lord, this morning, we get to choose. And we can start out by renewing our commitment to you. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there one here this morning? Is there anyone here this morning? Lord, I want to renew my commitment with you. We want to pray with you. Pray for you. Is there anyone? Slip up your hands, slip it back down. We'll, we want to pray. Are you making a commitment? Are you willing to make a commitment? So Father, you see our hearts. You see our lives. We lay them at your feet this morning. And we may say, yes, Lord, I want to pick it up and begin to live with you, or we can just leave it lay there. But Lord, we get to choose. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the worship that we've had this morning. We ask your blessing upon each one. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen.